Matilda. I'm here to read Fletcher and the Falling Leaves. The world was changing. Each morning, when Fletcher bounded out of his den, everything seemed just a little bit different. The rich green of the forest was turning into a dusty gold, and the soft swishing sound of summer was fading to a crinkly whisper. Fletcher's favorite tree looked dull, dry, and brown. Fletcher was beginning to get worried. The seasons are changing. I think my tree is sick, said Fletcher. What's wrong with it, said Mom. It's, its leaves are turning brown, said Fletcher. Don't worry, it's only autumn, she said. Fletcher ran back to his tree and patted the rough bark. Don't worry, tree, it's only autumn, he said. You'll feel better soon. But the tree didn't get any better. Each day, more leaves turned brown. One morning, the wind blew a small brown leaf off of a branch. Fletcher jumped up high and caught it very gently in his paws. <clears throat> Don't worry, tree. I've got your leaf. I'll fix you. Fletcher looked around, picked up a piece of grass, and carefully tied the leaf to a branch. Just then, another gust of wind ruffled, ru ruffled Fletcher's fur. The little leaf shook itself free and fluttered back to the ground. Fletcher picked it up again and thought very hard. Then he poked the leaf onto a twig and pushed it down firmly. Now you hold tight, said Fletcher. No more flying around. The little leaf gave a tiny rustle in reply. So he's trying to save all the leaves, but the leaves are supposed to fall off in autumn. <clears throat> the next day, a strong wind was blowing through the forest. Fletcher rushed out of the den and ran all the way to his tree. Lots of branches were bare, and the little lost leaf spun everywhere. Don't worry, tree. I'll catch them for you. I promise. Round and round and round whirled Fletcher, swirling, running after the swirling leaves. I think he's going to be able to catch all those leaves. I don't know. Leaves, wonderful leaves, just what I need for my nest, said a squirrel. But these leaves belong to the tree, said Fletcher. Don't take them away. The tree doesn't need them anymore, said the squirrel. Help, help, the wind and the squirrel are stealing our leaves, said Fletcher. Leaves, terrific, just what I need to keep warm, said a porcupine rolling around. But these leaves belong to the tree, said Fletcher, plucking leaves from the porcupine's needles. Not anymore, snuffled the porcupine, and away he rolled. Help, help, the wind, the squirrel, and the porcupine are stealing our leaves, cried Fletcher. <laughs> Suddenly, a flock of, of friendly birds swooped down from the sky. They picked up the leaves in, in their beaks and put them back onto the tree branches. Soon the tree was leafy again, and Fletcher flopped down and smiled. Thank you, birds, thank you, he gasped. As the birds fluttered away, he lay looking up through the leaves at the sky and drifted off to sleep. But the wind continued to blow, and the branches still danced. The leaves shivered and shook themselves and began to wiggle free. They tossed and turned and twitched and twirled and tumbled to the ground. They brushed Fletcher's ears and nose and filled his dreams with whispering sounds. When Fletcher finally woke up, he couldn't believe his eyes. Instead of a roof of dancing leaves, all he could see were bare branches against the sky. Oh, tree, I'm so sorry, gulped Fletcher. All your leaves are gone. But then he saw, high in the branches, one small leaf still holding on. I won't let the wind steal that one, said Fletcher, and he began to climb. He crawled along to the last leaf and, it, and held it firmly onto the branch. All day long, the wind blew, the branches, the wind blew, the branches bounded, and Fletcher held tight. I'll stay with you, leaf, he said. Don't worry. But then, with a sudden whoosh of wind, the branch bounced high with a plip. He let go and fluttered like a little flag clutched in Fletcher's paw. Fletcher looked sadly at the leaf. Hey, you want to come listen to the rest of the book? Come on. Fletcher looked sadly at the leaf he had promised to save. He carried it carefully down the tree and back to the den. He made a cozy little bed for it and gently tucked it in. But all night long, he could only think of his tree all on its own. At dawn, Fletcher tiptoed outside. 
The wind had finally stopped blowing and the air was cold. The moon still hung in the clear sky and pale stars glimmered. As he came to his favorite tree, Fletcher saw a magical sight. What do you think? The tree was hung with thousands of icicles, shining silver in the early light. You are more beautiful than ever, whispered Fletcher. But are you all right? A tiny breeze shivered the branches, making a sound like laughter. And in the light of the rising sun, the sparkling branches nodded. Fletcher gave his tree a hug. Then he went back to the den for a nice, warm breakfast. I can, bring, I can bring the book back to school this week so you guys can see and you can feel all of the pretty icicles on the page. Because that's what's supposed to happen. And that's going to start to happen here. All of the trees will start to lose their leaves around here. And we'll start to get snow and icicles on them. The Thanks, Delta. We miss you. See you in a few.